YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here in a Total War Warhammer online battle. This one is going to be Empire versus Norska. And in the days following the release of Norska, I heard a lot of people complaining that like Norska's OP, the monsters just pound everything, mammoths are OP. I'm sure some of that has settled in a little bit because people are getting used to new builds. Uh, but this one is actually going to be an interesting one. I feel like that the um, the Empire here brought an appropriate counter to a monstery Norska. Um, but see, Norska can do different types of builds, but there's a couple of things that Norska lacks that's going to make them um, a little more challenged in certain scenarios. They lack heavy cavalry, and they lack long-range units. So everything else they do quite well, but they lack those things. Um, so there is a mammoth here, there's a frost worm, there are skin wolves, there's spears, there's uh, some marauder uh, berserker, or hang on, just marauders up front, I think. And there's one marauder champion with great weapon. I don't know, there's three marauder champions up front. Wow, very small Norska army. Um, now the Empire has done well here. They've got Demigriff Knights with Halberds, good at helping deal with monsters. Spears, just nice fodder units, good to slow stuff down and protect guns. I like that they had the silver bullets and uh, the other two handgunners, though against Norska, I'm not sure magic damage does you anything particularly good. I'd have to go look and see if anything has physical resistance, which some of them might. Um, I don't remember. But anyway, there's two in Empire captains on foot to help support the infantry. That's always a good idea. And then Carl Franz is here on foot as well. Why is it important that these guys are on foot? Well, if you expect monsters from Norska, remember that when a unit is on foot and it gets tossed, like gets knocked around, it can't be damaged while it's getting up. And so it makes it take longer and be more difficult for large units to kill things, but you sacrifice, of course, mobility and striking power. But against a monster build, it's a safer way to keep your army intact for longer and to support your infantry. Mammoths can kill large units very, very quickly due to their huge weapon strength and armor piercing. Look at the gunners here going for the mammoth and the frostworm. You can see here that the uh, the Norskin units are going to come through. Very nice sea fang here from the Norskin player. Frostworm immediately goes for the gunners, but there's demigriffs there to protect. It's going to force the frostworm out, and it's already taking massive damage. It's probably going to die right here. And, and that leaves the guns free to fire at the mammoth, which hasn't broken free to get to them yet. And mammoths will absolutely melt under combined gunfire. So you can see here that it's definitely taking its toll. I mean, it's not going to die instantly, but you can see the toll that these guys are taking. The Frostworm is down. There's now Demigriff Knights to help with the Mammoth as well. Now, back here where the Mammoth gets a hold of this um, Sorcerer, he'll probably do potentially some good damage. That is Wolfric, by the way. You can see up front, Carl did take some damage from the Mammoth, but now he's kind of settled into a fight against the infantry. And you can see here that Wolfric, unable to get to the skirmishers, is going to die rather quickly. And then the uh, Hounds, because of the protection of the Spears and the Demigriff Knights, can't get to the Gunners. And the Gunners become the Bane of Norska. Works out extremely well. Now the Gunners are going to get or The Hounds do finally get through, but it's too late. The damage done to Wolfric is... Yeah, it's done. And without Wolfric here, the... Uh, Norska army is in trouble. Skin wolves are good units, and combined with the right things, they can take on big stuff like demigriffs, but they're going to die to demigriffs in this case. You can see that the Empire army is going to hold strong. Unbreakable flagellants, slow to break through the lines, and again, the, uh, the heroes on foot are going to slow any breakage through your lines. So it's definitely a good way to go. You can see the Empire captain still going strong on both sides, doing some good damage. And the ice, or the, uh, the Norskin Ice Wolves did get to some of the guns, but there was enough here. The Bright Wizard's kind of an interesting touch here. I'm not exactly sure why they brought the Bright Wizard. There are a couple of decent buffs on it, but it may have been to try and deal with Skin Wolves. Because they are vulnerable to fire damage, I guess. Could be one reason. I think Trolls are as well. So that might be the reason for the, uh, the Bright Wizard. Wolfric came back from routing, but he's at 90 hit points. All he has to do is get looked at by some hand gunners, and that'll be it. He is going to use his, uh... He tried using a ship there, but I don't think it did a whole lot. He got 97 kills despite having been hit pretty hard. So you can see why it's so important to deal with monster units. But that's one thing you can do as Norska to trick enemies like the Empire. 
is that's the thing, right? Is Norska going to bring the monster build, or are they going to bring something different? So that's kind of how you have to have to use Norska to your favor, is to do your best to predict how your enemy is going to counter you, because had had the opponent uh, or the Norska player left behind the monsters and brought an infantry heavy build here, the Empire could have been in grave trouble indeed. Uh, but in this case, with the monster build, the Empire was well prepared. So I thought that was a pretty interesting replay. Let's take a look at one more. All right, folks. So here's the second battle. This one's going to be Norska versus Dwarves, or more particularly Clan Angrun. There are some Fimir warriors with great weapons here, and there are also uh, Marauder champions with great weapons. So lots of armor piercing to take on the Dawi. The danger to that is going to be the skirmishing capabilities of the Dawi. There are some Ulthar's raiders here. Uh, there's a Gyro Bomber, which can definitely be problems for Norska, because Norska does have aerial units, but they may or may not always bring them. There's some Miners, Slayers, Bugman's Rangers, interesting one here in the back, so I haven't seen a lot of Bugman's Rangers. This is a double Runesmith Rune Lord build, so could be very dangerous to infantry, though I do believe Runesmiths got nerfed a little in the recent patch. Can anybody confirm that? I think I heard it, but I haven't had a chance to confirm it. You got the Ekron Miners and some Dwarf Warriors in the front lines, and the back lines are Dwarf Warriors with great weapons. So let's see how it works out. I mean, with the Fimir Warriors and the Marauder Champions with great weapons, the Dwarves are going to be in rough shape here. And I don't know how they're going to stop this, unless the Runesmiths and the Rune Lord do it. Because there is a ton of armor-piercing infantry, and it is going to be brutal. Gyro Bomber sitting back bombing or uh, firing. It really needs to get over here and bomb out these expensive infantry before they get a chance to do their damage early. There are some uh, throwing axe um, Marauder Hunters back here, and then there's a the uh, Berserkers here, which are going to come through. Now over here, the, uh, the Thane. Oh, those are Thanes, not Double Runesmith. My bad, but I still think Runesmith's got uh, nerfed. The Rune Lord, I think, here was foolish to put himself on the Anvil of Doom. Magic damage probably isn't a huge concern from Norska. I mean, it can be if they cast the right spell, but otherwise, um, this makes him very vulnerable to monstrous units. Otherwise, he would get knocked around and it would keep him alive a lot longer, which is one of the benefits of the Rune Lord. So we've seen a little bit of the up close view, but I mean, as you can see here, Norska is just absolutely shredding through. The Ulthar's Raiders are firing, but they're not getting a lot of damage done. Now they're doing some work against the Fimir Warriors, but they needed to be focused on them a lot sooner. And the Gyro Bomber needed to be bombing rather than just firing kind of aimlessly here. The Ice Swarm Marauders make it around the flank. Very cool looking unit, by the way. They're going to be able to fight those Marauders with a pretty decent chance of success, I think. And the Fimir Warriors here, backing up the infantry, are going to be brutal because the Dwarves really don't have the right answer to them. Bugman's Rangers, very cool looking unit firing into here. No doubt all hopped up on Dwarf Brew. But um, they're not accomplishing a lot because they're apparently obstructed. Looks like the Gyro Bomber is going to move into action, but it's too late. The time to use the Gyro Bomber is early when the effects of killing that uh, infantry is going to be maximum. And then, oh, don't drop the bombs. Yeah, he's going to drop the bombs on one of the most loosely spread, least threatening units, which is going to be the Marauder Hunters. So definitely not a good call by the Dwarf. The Rune Lord gets absolutely chewed up. Icehorn Marauders are doing quite well. And the Premier Warriors have broken through and they've actually gotten into the Wulthar's Raiders. And these guys are close quarters, but being close quarters against a Premier Warrior is probably not a good idea. Yep, not a good idea at all. So yeah, Gyro Bomber is not going to stop it. He can fire away at the Premier Warriors, but it is too late. That damage has to be done earlier. Has to be done earlier. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward mop-up operation for Norska. And a nice anti-dwarf build there. Now, there are certainly dwarf builds that could have been a pain for this Norskan army. There was not a lot of fast movers in this army. And a dwarf army with a considerable number of thunderers right there would have been brutal. There's no shields on the Fimir Warriors, and there's no shields on the Marauder Champions with great weapons. And a line of Thunders would have ripped a new hole through the Norskins there. It is an interesting army. I'm not really sure exactly what Clan Angrind had in mind with this army. It was kind of a hodgepodge of units. 
Bugman's Rangers don't really... I mean, what they're good for is standing up against... Um, like, they can do a little bit better in melee. And when you think about multiplayer, rather than spending the extra money on the Bugman's Rangers, you'd have been better off to just get cheaper Rangers and then more infantry to protect it or better infantry to protect them because not a lot of great infantry here. I like a Rune Lord. You would have been better off, though, with two Rune Smiths. They would have helped melt off a considerable amount of the infantry. So the double Rune Lord, Rune Smith build, or the double Rune Smith, Rune Lord build. Definitely should have put your Rune Lord on foot rather than the Anvil so that they won't get killed by monsters or other units near as quickly because they get knocked around. And then Thunderers would have been a solid pick in this case, a solid pick. But yeah, Bugman's Rangers, a little too expensive. If we go take a look at the cost just real quick. Custom battle. Oh, Bugman's Rangers. Yeah, 750. And you can get a standard Ranger. And if we take a look at the difference real quick. So the Bugman's Ranger gives you a little more uh, hit points, better leadership, slightly more melee attack and defense and charge bonus. Yeah. They can stalk, and they have this, uh, repl wow, they replenish hit points. I didn't know, well, I forgot they replenished hit points, but again, it's not worth the 250. It's just not, because as unit models die, the replenishment won't matter. So you'd be better off to save the 250 and just go with standard rangers, or like I said, in this case, if you're going to spend more money, spend it on the thunderers, because these guys do all that armor piercing damage, and are going to be a much better choice. Definitely a good, solid choice. Would have done tons of damage to Femir Warriors and Marauder Champions. Question for you all for tonight. What's your favorite faction to counter Norska, and how do you like to do it? Just kind of curious. I think Norska is like a very solid faction in multiplayer. I don't know if they're all the way up in the top tier with the Empire of Empires green skins. I don't think they're there. But I think they're good, and I think they're competitive against any faction if used properly and if you use the right bit of psychology to trick your opponent into thinking what you're going to bring. So I definitely think Norska is capable. I don't think there's anything about them that's OP that I've seen. They're, they're definitely a monster-focused faction for the most part, but have other capabilities. There are some interesting changes to magic out there that we need to talk about. Some of the spells have been buffed considerably, and it was kind of done secretly. It wasn't in the patch notes, so we need to talk through that at some point. Appreciate MSI sponsoring the channel. Hope you all are enjoying this. I will see you all next time. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.